right when I moved this food, this animal was right around here. This is not a good waste of a bug. We need to feed this to something. Brought a nice little critter carrier from at home, which we had from I don't remember. Knowing how big the eggs are for these guys, I knew he's only at least maybe a week old at most. The Bohemian! Click the subscribe button below. Power. We're gonna go set up a fish trap. A1A Adventures, baby. Okay, so I just had to run home really fast because something really cool happened and I found in the shop. Stay tuned because it's from the Bahamas. Safe and sound from the Bahamas. Just have to gather up a few things so we can get to know our little critter a little better and observe him and kind of learn something about him. All right, and I got a cool nifty little critter carrier that we can use to go ahead and check this guy out, even a little feeding area. These are pretty cool. I forgot which company makes these, but you could find these definitely in your reptile section at your local pet store. If you do know the name of the company and you want to give them a shout out, you could comment below. But these things are really cool. They're more sturdier than your common little hermit crab kit. It's more for, you know, an arachnid, uh, bugs, or kind of a reptile. Something like that, you know? Okay, so I just had to run home to grab a few supplies because I certainly wasn't prepared to do a vlog today, nor did I intend to do a vlog, but sometimes unpredictable things happen, especially here in South Florida with a lot of wildlife that we do have. And so this is what happened. As my usual routine, Chomper, our abano Paku, gets fed in the morning. So I come over to his tank and I go to grab his food and we give him several of these pond pellets, give him some pond pellets, this food was right over here. Right when I moved this food, this animal was right around here, making a bed right around the food. I thought it was dead. Granted, I had just turned the lights on, so it was very dark. I mean, obviously it was sleeping. Um, it had its head down. I went to go pick it up. Still didn't move. I grabbed a towel. I picked it up with a towel. Didn't know if it was dead, assuming it was dead. Then it opened its eyes. So I'm like, okay, hmm, it's alive. <laughs> And looking at its size too, very tiny. And knowing how big the eggs are for these guys, I knew he's only at least maybe a week old at most. Plus he has a slit on his stomach too from the egg sac from being in the egg, which isn't fully healed up, which is how they absorb their first meal and they get nutrition to basically last them through their first several weeks of being alive until they find their first meal, which is typically insects. So I did bring a few supplies with me. Brought a nice little critter carrier from at home, which we had from I don't remember what, but these are pretty good, you know? Just a little heat lamp with your typical 75 watt heat bulb. And there, this is Exoterra, which is not optimal for keeping or housing any reptiles permanently. You also need UVB. UVA is for heat, UVB is the ultraviolet rays, and that's what they use to absorb their calcium and get their vitamin D. And we brought a couple super worms. One really small one because this guy is super tiny, so we don't want to try to give him any bigger ones, but I mean, you know, I'm looking at his size right now. Yeah, he's definitely gonna need that smaller one in there. So let's get to it. Let's see what we got here. And mind you, I don't even know how he got in here because the door is super tight. Uh, we haven't left it open this whole week preparing for Hurricane Dorian. Um, so I don't know. I mean, there's a very small crack on the bottom of the door, but only little insects and bugs can get in through there. So I don't know. But without further ado, introducing to you in a temporary pretzel container, pretzel container, the Bohemian, 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 Bohemian Curly Tail. Such a baby one at that. Let's check this little guy out. Hopefully he doesn't run out. This is smaller than a brand new one day old hatchling bearded dragon. 
This guy is very tiny. I don't even know if this is a boy or a girl. I can see it has a tiny little tail kink on the end. I don't know what, from what. It could have been maybe from coming out of the egg or exiting the egg, but he's so tiny. I mean, this is smaller than a pinky from head to tail. So, with that, we are gonna go pick him up, set up a slight new cage for him, a temporary one just for today, and we're just gonna learn a little bit about the Bohemian Curly Tail, because these guys are unfortunately invasive to South Florida, but they are a gem. They are very cool. Uh, as they grow older, their tails start to curl upwards, almost over their back, similar to a scorpion tail, and that is just a unique trait about these guys, but they are really cool. I mean, unfortunately, they do eat a lot of our local other anoles, which are smaller lizards too, and they are pretty dominant as far as maybe a predatory small lizard in a sense, but, but they definitely are safe here in Florida from the Bahamas, from Hurricane Dorian, thank goodness, but uh, we are definitely fully, have a full big abundance of them in South Florida. So first things first, because this guy, you know, I don't know how long he's been inside in here. I mean, he could have been, it could have been right before the storm, before all the bad weather, or it could have been from last night. I don't know. He could have even hatched out in the shop. I don't know. So in the meantime, because he could be a little dehydrated, he looks, he looks pretty, pretty hefty though, but we're going to go ahead and take him out and we're going to put him in the other tank, that little critter carrier, and we're going to soak him a little bit in some water. If he starts to drink, cool. If not, he could still absorb you know some of the hydration through his cloaca through his vent and that's it so we'll get him started that way and try to you know revive him a little bit and set him free all right you little monster you ready are you ready I also don't want him to drop his tail because I don't know he's actually that small. I mean, I've never, I've seen these guys really small before, but not, not this small, not this small. No, no, got you. Come here, come on, come on. Almost had you. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. See how, see how sweaty that is? My hand got really hot. I didn't want to hurt him. So, let's put him right there. How cool are you? Very alert. Very alive. Very happy to be safe. I'm sure. Bless everybody in the Bahamas who did not end up being so safe in Dorian or lost a lot of things we have donated this week to the Bahamas and we encourage everybody who can please if you can donate to the Bahamas and there's plenty of places local shelters and local drop drop places where you can go ahead and contribute some supplies for relief anything helps at this point I'm sure they will appreciate anything back to our little guy you can see he's breathing pretty hard he's kind of stressed out a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and spray him a little bit just to get him used to some water and on that note, we will also then go ahead and add a little bit of water to him. He may, he may freak out a little bit here. But this may be something that will stimulate him to drink, such as rain. But not too much. Because being that small too, you don't want to flood their nostrils because there's also a possibility that you could drown them. That's perfect is thirsty, which I don't see him drinking, still see him breathing. I say him, but we don't know. But it's definitely breathing a lot and just chilling, just relaxing. It's so young, it probably only knows just to run, just to be flighty, just to get away. Leave me alone, predators. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little water in here and just and it's like less than a quarter of an inch of water in here just so it can keep its head up and then soak a little bit just to try to revive it a little bit more and offer some hydration. My little pal, you came to the right place. Cool. Not too much.
Lift your head. Lift your head. Okay, cool. Lift your head. Okay, cool. Awesome. If it's alert and lifting its head. Ooh, it licked real quick. You don't know. It may like this. It may definitely need this. I'm sure it can. I mean, after you're sitting inside for longer than 24 hours, who couldn't use some water, right? All right, and to make sure he gets some good heat because reptiles are all cold blooded, we're going to go ahead and offer some heat. Also, maybe it'll help him absorb some of that water. The vents, we're just going to hook it up right there. Oh, thank goodness I didn't check if that worked before I brought it here. And these are cool little ballasts. You can get them. They're a lot cheaper than if you want to go with the designer brand of um, housing, I'm sorry, of the uh, for the bulbs. Uh, they're just a couple dollars at your home improvement store. Boom. All right, little bugger. Cool. Always, always, always put the top on. Never walk away without the top. You can definitely feel it's warm. I'm gonna raise, raise it up just a little bit so it's not directly close to the plastic. And that should be good. For about 15, 20 minutes, we'll let this take place. We'll check back on our little Bahama. Bohemian curly tail friend. Just one more shot of us taking a nice warm bath. Look at that. Just chilling. And I took the precaution of putting a little slant to that so the water gathers on one side. So obviously, if it puts its head down because it seems to be relaxed that it's not gonna fall asleep underwater or possibly drown itself. So we're just hanging out, getting some heat, getting some water, before we go back out to the open nature. And these guys love the sun. I mean, they are always basking outside in like the hottest piece of asphalt in the parking lot that you could possibly think of. They, I mean, they do dig a lot of burrows under, under plants and they do kind of find their way under asphalt. So I could see where they're slightly destructive, but come on, just like iguanas, if they're gonna eat hibiscus flowers, I mean, if that's the worst they're gonna do, and eat other lizards, which there's plenty of small lizards in Florida anyway, that, I mean, these guys aren't that bad. Try to catch it again, it was just drinking. Okay, this is really gross. I just saw a huge cockroach crawling across the, the corner here. <laughs> so we're gonna go outside and I'm gonna throw this cockroach on the ground and we are gonna see if a curly tail wants to eat this thing. Let's find us a curly tail. Oh, look at that little gecko. Oh, he's missing a tail. How'd you lose your tail, little guy? All right, back to the curly tails. There's gotta be some out here basking somewhere. They're always out here. Where are they at? Where are they at? I hear them. Oh, there's a little one in there. There's a little one right in there. Nope, still none. I'm gonna throw it out on the sidewalk and just see if any of them want it. We'll do that. I'm sure one will see from inside of there. Up, oh, there he is. Let's see. Anybody gonna come out? Do they want to eat you? I 
really wish I had one just to throw it to, because if there was a big one out here, which there usually are, that thing would have taken it in one second. Cockroach is cooking in the sun. I'm just trying to look to see if I could see another one around here. They're usually big. I mean, these suckers are like, they're eating dogs and stuff, man. They're big. This is not a good waste of a bug. We need to feed this to something. Peeds and always little night crawlers out here. So I guess that's what they feed off of too. And they get nice and hefty. But I know there's a big one in these bushes over here. Just looking to devour you. Okay, so this was fun, but I admit defeat. It's a bust. They're not, they're not biting, they're not, I don't know, they don't want it. I think it's because of the camera. I've never done this with the camera leaving it so close. 
if you check our other videos, you can actually see the curly tails, us feeding them the superworms, and they're going ham, they're going crazy. But as far as leaving it out here, I don't think, I don't think they're liking that. I think they feel pretty threatened over this crazy, scary camera here. Plus, we gotta finish our vlog here with Mr. Super Soaker. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and dry them up and go ahead and set the little enclosure up and put the smaller superworm in there and it'll be able to circle around and maybe if it's hungry, it'll eat. We'll find out. All right. And here's your reptile substrate tip of the day. Paper towels are always best. It can avoid any impaction or any digestive problems with your animal if they happen to by accidentally digest any sand or reptile bark or anything like that. So it's not the most appealing or decorative, but it serves the best for your animal and for the health of your animal. Once again, we're not going to be keeping this little guy, but even just as a temporary substrate, we're going to go ahead and just keep him on that. He is active. Cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just raise the light up a little bit so it's not directly as hot, but there still is some heat. Yes, there's still heat. All right, I'm going to put this down. This is going to be, in a sense, the basking spot for it and I'm gonna go ahead and put the superworm on the bottom where it can crawl around and away from it hoping that it stays on top of that lid so we'll see okay so here is the superworm here is the curly tail pick you up no get off me don't fall I'm gonna try to just grab it and put it on top Cool. So if it stays there, I'm going to drop the superworm in now, and we'll see if it wants to eat it. Now in a stressful situation like this, I highly wouldn't get any hopes up, unless it's severely hungry, because even letting this little animal go, it's going to, you know, revert back to its instincts and maybe take 24 hours for it to even feel hungry again, just getting over all the stress of being inside, in captivity for a little bit, but let's just wait and see. Okay, so it's only been two minutes and the superworm is starting to make its way around the side and doesn't seem to have too much interest in the bug whatsoever. And we're not gonna be keeping this animal long term, so otherwise I would invest in crickets and maybe try to see if it would eat crickets, that would be an option. I don't really even know what food is, so it starts usually on ants and maybe small spiders and but that superworm is being its first meal, likely not. But you never know, even if it just shows interest in it, it can spark some sort of appetite. See him just to jump down just to look at it, and it's just kind of freaking out now because I'm closer to it, but it jumped down to look at it, I guess, because it was kind of curious, of course, what it was, are you a predator, what, who are you? You know, are you food, what's going on? But it doesn't seem too interested. Um, I don't know, we'll still see. We're still gonna keep recording and I'll keep watching and we'll see what happens. You never know. So I did find some neat facts on these guys too. Uh, let's see. They are native to Peru, the Caribbean, and Cuba. Uh, let's see. They grow four to seven inches. They have a lifespan of five to eight years. And there's actually 20 species of these lizards. The name curly tail comes from the manner in which they rapidly twitch their tail, and in general curly tail lizards have a robust body with several different colors. Some curly tail lizards have a dorsal crest. This one's like, the only crest I want is to crest away from this worm, get away. But that is only if you want to keep these guys as a pet. We have many reptiles, we have much years of reptile experience in desert and tropical reptiles, but with curly tails. Not much, not that they would differentiate from any other lizard, I would not assume, probably being more flighty and less docile, I would assume, you know, unless you can pick these guys up and hand tame them, you know, at least an hour a day and commit that time to them, I'm sure they could adapt, you know, but otherwise, you know, not my interest at the moment to house and add to our animal collection. Okay guys, so good news and bad news. Good news is the lizard is outside, it's free, it's gone. Bad news is I did not have enough battery life to get it on camera. 
the camera died, I think, when I had the roach outside, you know, three or four different times, leaving it out there with the GoPro for about 20 minutes, so, no, it definitely didn't work out well, so, leaving the camera outside for about 20 minutes each time. But remember, if you do want to see the meat, check out our other video, we have a pretty cool video posted. And make sure to like and subscribe this video. Make sure to hit the bell button below with the notification, please. Minnow feeding frenzy! Exactly, which is what? The... Green star polyp? The GSP. Or the other one, the CJ frag. No, the red mushroom, right? Oh, no, 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 we don't have that. How would that end up on the shelf? Look saying. at Crawler Bear! Crawler, Crawler. The Minnow Frenzy is joining it. Stay tuned, we're going to have a lot of tank updates. As AJ was just talking about, he discovered a couple cool things in his saltwater tank, so we're going to be updating on those, because we have several corals that we think are starting to spread, and possibly some new fish additions. But make sure to like and subscribe, stay updated with all of our vlogs on A1A Adventures, and thank you for your support. Crawl a bear, baby.